Lost Tape Number 27 Still Life with Sumatra Mandaling Table and Coaster It's day... Mm, 84 of my tour in the Great Chameleon War, and I've found a coffee mug on a table in the middle of a field. The mug is not of the novelty variety. No thermal designs that appear on its surface when hot liquid is poured inside. It's not shaped like a tiger or an alien, and it has no logo, words, or pictures on its ceramic finish. The coffee mug is plain white. Has a square handle, meant for picking up the mug, so as not to burn your fingers when the drink inside is steaming, like it is now. Hmm. The table is wood, legs set in the grass. A turquoise epoxy streak runs down the center of the tabletop, along its curve of wood grain. One of those you see all over DIY internet videos, and boutique shops in the revamped industrial zones of big cities. Rustic. Chic. Furniture your mother yells at you for if you place a drink on its surface without a coaster, which the coffee mug does in fact have beneath it. A thin cork square. One of its corners chipped from an event so small, the whole collective memory of the universe most likely forgot to store its origin. There's one chair pulled out at the table's side, and I take a seat, prop my elbow up. I'm thinking about the concept of heaven when I take my first sip. If heaven exists, it's big, and time whirls infinitely across its boundary. Upon entering heaven, it would be understandable to become overwhelmed. So, of course, you would spend your early cycles of heaven with those you loved during your life, reveling in comfort and familiarity. Even if you died decades apart on the material plane, it's likely they'd arrive at the same time as you at heaven's entrance pit. Such is the nature and duration of our lifetimes compared against the infinite. You would explore jungles that span whole planetary systems, navigating vines that reach through space and orbit to ensnare moons and asteroid belts in great verdant crowns. You'd take long walks on a deserted beach, silver sand pouring out of statues with permanent sunsets reflecting off their polished, multi-mouthed faces. You'd hold hands with the eternal love of your life and feel their warmth spread through every conscious pathway your imagination was capable of conjuring. But forever is a long time, and eventually your hands would separate. You would walk around a marble column in a museum of inexplicable machinery, and your love would wander down a separate corridor. You would watch them go on their way while you went on your own, and before you knew it, you would be separated for what felt like 100,000 years. At some point, you would find each other again. Hold each other. Whisper secrets. But it wouldn't be the same. 
your forms would be slightly different, altered by the influence and landscape of heaven. At first, just different hairstyles, maybe smaller ears, a change in voice and speech pattern. But such departures and their subsequent reunions would continue to happen, each time the form of your love distorting more. Extra limbs, no limbs at all, different colors, different shapes, one heart pumping blood turning to more hearts pumping blood, turning to no hearts at all circuits conducting electricity, an engine funneling steam, the minuscule gravitational pull of two dandelion seeds circling one another inside a glass jar. And maybe if you were strong, if you could remember everything about your relationship from before, you would still love them still find a hand to hold when there were no hands left at all. Finally though, at the end of all love's comprehension, after billions of cycles and expedition across that great faceless clock, you would find them again, completely unrecognizable. You wouldn't even know they were there at all. You'd walk to the top of a green hill and find a table, a coffee mug, not knowing that this was your wife, your husband, your best and only friend, a thinking thing with blood that once stood as the fulcrum of all meaning for you. You would drink the coffee, savor in its randomness, flip the plain cork coaster over, thinking there might be a message hidden on its underside. But there won't be, just the chipped corner, which either means nothing or means everything. If there's any understanding to be found, any last message of hope or loss or longing, it will come from walking away from the table. It's pretty blue streak of polymer resin glinting like a long forgotten river in the sun. A dark coffee stain among those ripples in the shape of two bodies drifting lost and blind side by side, but forever just out of reach. you talking to that coffee mug who the hell drinks a random cup of coffee laying out in the open the way you say that makes me feel like I should apologize but I'm not going to 
Whatever. You want to see where that table came from? Peer into the cusp of heaven. <clears throat> that great, faceless clock. All right, I get it. Uh, sure. Just go ahead and show me, you big weirdo. Okay. chameleon skull. Yep. Still bioluminescent, too. Its brain underwent rapid petrification and spiraled upward like that, then splayed out into those four rectangles punctured through the ceiling. Those are the table legs. The blue streak in the table up there isn't resin. It's actually opal. Has anyone ever told you you're... Uh, you're a weird geologist. Paleontologist, actually. Okay, yeah, shh, 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 it's crying. Careful, that stuff is primordially toxic. A paranormal dissociative hallucinogen. I've seen people evaporate after ingesting some, turn it inside out and glaze into marble. Well, yeah, I've heard. A pharmacological Pandora's box, right? Pulls your spine out and lets it plane shift around a while without all the meat attached. <sighs> I want to try it. So, you want me to babysit you? <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. Uh, just observe. Be a good scientist. Take some notes. Maybe, uh, maybe sing me a lullaby if it looks like I'm being colonized by repressed intrauterine memories from my subconscious. Sure thing, dear Psychonaut. April 10th, 2020. Subject, Coffee Cup Smasher number 24. You may proceed with oral administration. Sweet dreams. It's becoming waterfall. Tropical. Dolphins, urchin and pale. Jellyfish plummeting down my throat. Tearing. Splattering on rocks. Yes. A forbidden marine entrail language. Expanding. Painting red runes on boulders. Darkness sheds its rough pelt. Cave dirt ripples to golden sand. Cerulean sky hues earthen walls. Uh, my... and my hands. 
My hands are shrinking. <clears throat> My vertebra contracting. Close. Close disintent. Dis 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 words. Dis sentence. No. I'm hard. Not form. <laughs> no. Not good. No. A breast. A sundress. Beer cans. <clears throat> Sand castle. Starfish. Starfish. B -b 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 biting. <clears throat> B -b 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 biting. <clears throat> I grit foam salt. <clears throat> Lizards hatching. G gull speared. So many, so many hatching. Oh. Carrying me, carrying me infant out to sea. And roaring, roaring, surf, roaring. Drown. D -d Drown. W w w w wet. W w w w w wet. Wet. Thank you for sharing in the first part of my weird LSD lizard fever dream. The strange is just getting started. We'll be back in the fall with part two and the finale of season one. Over the summer, I'll be taking an audio break to finish the novel I've been writing for the last eight years. The most polished shard of my soul I could ever offer to anyone. Hush now. The rest of season one of The Great Chameleon War is already written, and there have been some great performances recorded for it already. This season featured Emily Phipps as the arsonist, and Romina as the paleontologist, with additional sound wizardry provided by Sean Barry, and script notes from my lovely and talented roommate, Ben DeCorso. And for those of you who want Chameleon War episodes early, or would like to support more of my writing and audio projects, you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash singularityplaytime, or visit thegreatchameleonwar.com to find other ways to support. To stay in touch with your dear narrator, follow me on Twitter or Instagram at scratchybananas. Thanks for letting me seep inside your ear holes. I'm never leaving. You can't unhear this. So... This isn't goodbye, but the start of a forever-sized hello. Hello, 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 hello.